Guten Morgen, muchachos. Uh, how are you doing? Welcome back to Football Digest Daily. My name is Nyasha. This one is coming to you outside of four. I have to be honest, this one feels weird. It's saying outside of four. It's just so yeah, Iki too. Now, I know this season I've not been out in top four. Oh, have I? No, we've got outside of four for a minute. You know, like, it's, it's not looking good, but. And that was the Saturday yesterday by me not winning in the North London Derby. We did not win against Spurs. And I know in the previous said I don't fear Spurs. I know you're going to mesmerize them. We might just thrash them or destroy them. <laughs> destroy them, Wapi. Uliski Wapi. Nyinyam, you could convert chances. Man, we don't know how to convert chances at Arsenal. We don't. We don't. I was seeing a, I saw a start showing our conversion rate. I think it puts us as, at eighth in the league. We have so many big chances missed. We cannot convert. I don't even think we are creating enough, to be honest. It's all looking good. This is a sharp contrast of the Arsenal that we won last season. Last season, I'm kind of in quotes on a pig a -wa, pig -a -wa. I think last season, a time like this, we had lost only once to Manchester United. So basically, we had dropped three points. Now we have dropped four points. Four points. It's crazy. So it's, it's holistically for me, it's been a terrible week. Because first of all, in Suzuka, Mercedes did fuck all. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get into the podium. There was a double podium finish for McLaren. Crazy. Then, of course, you come to football. Now, uh, Real Madrid. We had a Madrid derby happening. Madrid to Lipigua. 3-1, handsomely. Hands down. Arsenal, for me, actually feels like a loss. Not like the derby. You expected us to win. Spurs have not collected anything from the Emirates since 2010. More than a decade, 13 years ago, is the last time they got something from us at home. Now they have a solid one point. God damn, it sucks. And Spurs, of course, now they go on unbeaten. Yo, it's, it's holistically for me, it's not been good. South Africa. South Africa. Springboks to leave people but on an island on Saturday. Yo, like, I'm, holistically? Terrible week. Absolutely terrible. Um, and it started off on Saturday, right? South Africa, we are playing against Ireland. Of course, you know the Rugby World Cup is going on. I'm a Springboks fan. Right? And you're going up against the number one team in Ireland. Number one team in the world is Ireland. Ireland or whatever you like. CC to number two and I was thinking, mm, nah, we can get something out of this game, man. We were just not into it. Yeah, Ireland were much, much better than us. We were not like badly off, but still, I mean, you want to be winning those kind of matches, right? Well, we lost that game. Um, and I feel like just set the pace for me as far as this weekend is concerned. Kutoka hapo ilikuwa to downhill. Ilikuwa kwenda chini. Uh, during on, on Saturday, of course, we had the 5 p.m. fixtures Manchester City versus Nottingham Forest. Uh, and Manchester City won that game 2 0. There was the red card given to Rodri, a bit of a uh, rush of blood in him. And I said, once he caught Nani by the neck, Morgan Gibbs, right? Gibbs knew this is my chance now. This is my chance to get this guy a red card. And it started going down. Then Rodri was like trying to lift him back up. I'm like, good, acha hizo wazi, acha hizo wazi, acha kwangu, acha kwenda chini. Yo isha enda. Rodri alichajua. Akati aliona mwemshika kwa shingo and started going down. Done for you, Meninga. Done for you, Maniga. That one is gone. You only red card straight. And you are thinking, mm. uh, Rodri was scared and put on the clan rights in two weeks. Like, eh, 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 apana, we, we, eh. The clan is too hot to handle. Me stuck in competition. I'm saying, akaenda pigo red card. He's obviously, he's going to miss uh, the next game for Manchester City and the October 8th clash with Arsenal. So that's, he's not going to be there. Uh, and you're thinking, mm, sasa ni declan rights ameachua sasa uwanja atawale. Mm. Uwanja atawale. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, then, of course, in other games uh, played at five, you had Fulham versus Crystal Palace, or rather Crystal Palace versus Fulham. I'm going to be honest. Were it not for Sam Johnston, Crystal Palace would have been beaten Kendo 3-0 or something. Johnston made a lot of sense for them against Fulham. Fulham are all over Crystal Palace at Sellers Park, but it, it Elisha in an all all uh, nil nil draw. Then you had Luton Town versus Wolves, and you're thinking, this is the chance Wolves now have to get some three points again, because I think they just have one win this season. And going up to Luton Town, they did not win that game, ended in a one all draw. I think Wolves got a red card, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so that was terrible. Gary O'Neill was fuming, man. You could just see him after the 90th minute We saw He was not happy. He was not happy. Not at all. Uh, then, of course, we had the 7th PPM fixture between Brentford and Everton. You're thinking, Everton have been so poor this season. They absolutely know where they're getting points against Brentford, right? Wrong. Yeah, they actually won that game 3-1, man. Like, I didn't see that one coming. I know Brentford, they were actually at home. You know what's funny? Everton beat Brentford away from home. Brentford were at home. They lost 3-1. That's not, that's not the Brentford you used to think, to be honest. It's not. It's not. So, I mean, kudos to Everton. And a man like Tarkovsky, if you have Tarkovsky in your FBL squad, man, he had 14 points. 
14. God damn, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's more than um, Haaland, even Haaland being the captain. So it's crazy, of course. Big win for Everton. Uh, after that, we had Burnley versus Manchester United. Before the game, I saw Johnny Evans starting line. I'm like, mm, these guys are jokers. Who in 2023 is having Johnny Evans starting off? Who? Apart from Manchester United. Because they are jokers. Yo, hey, Johnny Evans had a heck of a game, man. Now, I know they say, oh, it's Burnley and maybe he found his level. Maybe he actually did find his level in Burnley. But for that game, because you only beat what is in front of you, that game... Johnny Evans had a good one. He actually had scored a goal. It was chopped off because their striker was supposed to be scoring goals for them. It's costing them goals now. Manley Coyland was offside, or rather was was ruled to be um, offside and, and uh, uh, distracting the keeper. Right? So that was not going to stand. It was a good goal by the from Johnny Evans. Um, and of course, uh, he had not finished his work against Burnley. He assisted Johnny, uh, he assisted Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Bruno Fernandes with that looped ball and then the volley from Bruno. Hey, that was brilliant. Hey, you look That was good. That might actually just be the goal of the weekend. And that was enough to give Manchester United a one-day win. And I know Burnley play a lot of football. They, they, most likely they had more position. They had. If Burnley was a dog, it would be all back with no bite. So a down. Like they had a lot of ball position. But Kufunga Mabau Kombele is where they draw the line. Ah, we don't do that here. <laughs> no, 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 no. And this is not the Burnley used to say. It was a corner Burnley my long ball, my crossy, backing the pass in low blocks and trying to hit you on the counter attack. Nah, oh, no, no, good. Goom, keep bingo, bira, keep bingo, goom, goom, goom. Like any kufunga babawa, always. They cannot. So, yeah, my United won 1 0. Then on Sunday, we had a lot of games at 4 pm. I don't know why, but anyway, Liverpool versus West Ham. I was thinking West Ham might do something. Yeah, the only thing they did is get clapped. Yes, they lost 3 1. Um, to Liverpool and of course Liverpool I think now they're second in the standings yeah, and it's, not, it's looking good it's looking good it's not looking bad for them um, then uh, at 4pm we also had Brighton versus Bonal did you expect anything less, than, anything less than a Brighton win? no and Brighton did win that game uh, 3-1 good goals then of course we had Arsenal versus Spurs a game where for me I was expecting you know we are going to bamboozle Spurs with a fantastic football first of all Atta, before to your game throws a doubt injury injured. I'm like ah throws a doubt now and yeah, in the starting lineup, we see uh, Jesus is starting off on the wings. I'm like, Jesus on the wings. So that's in Ketia can play as a striker. Come on. And then Jesus in the game wins a ball from Madison. I'm like, this is it. Just convert it. I'm saying a bigger conversion. Yeah, rugby. Not yeah, not yeah, football. I swear down. If that was rugby, that would be very good. In the work. Who's this calling me right now? Not a good time. If, if that was rugby, that would have worked. Football, it doesn't. And I'm like, God damn it. Gabriel, that we should be converting these chances. There were two chances that we had against Spurs. We should have punished them, and we did not. And I feel really terrible about it. So it was bad. It was bad. Uh, I'll call you back. Yeah, it was not looking good, man. It was not looking good. So yeah, man, uh, we are not clinical enough. I saw somewhere start saying that Arsenal, in terms of conversion rate, we are somewhere I think eighth in the standings. I think our conversion rate is like. Either 12% or 21%. We are not looking good. We are missing a lot of big chances. We are not creating enough of chances. So, yeah, something has to be worked on, man. Because, yeah, like yesterday, we were just so sloppy. Gave away the ball so stupidly. Uh, like, Jorginho, once he came on for Declan Rice, and I'm like, why, Jorginho? Why are you spending so much time with the ball trying to be fancy? And I gotta give Spurs. They pressed us high enough, and they, they, they actually capitalized on the mistakes that we did. So, that was good for them. No lie. Um, no lie. That was good. So let's just wait and see how it's going to be popping for Spurs. They're looking good so far, unbeaten. Next up, they have Liverpool. So if they get past that, then you're thinking, mm, Spurs might be something to watch out for this season with Ange Postecoglou, right? Arsenal, on the other hand, they look a bit in disarray, to be honest. No, no balance in the midfield. I don't know why Ateta is sitting on the Kai Havertz thingy. Kai Havertz now is a certified James Bond, yeah? Uh, and maybe he'll cement that position on Sunday or next weekend once we play Bournemouth and he fails to score. It's not looking good. The balance in the midfield is not looking good. He took off Vieira so that he can bring on Kai Havertz. I don't get it. Look, for, for Declan Rice, it makes sense, right? Because I think Rice has an injury now. <laughs> Recall me saying uh, Rodri Hardy was going up against Declan Rice and he was like, I don't want to do that. Adi, Adi, Rice was like, no, 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 no. Hey, no, no Rodri. I know Rodri, no game. No Rodri, no party. Hey, I'm not going to feature. Also, a coinche. Anyway, we don't know how long he'll be out for, but he has an injury that way. He was taken off during halftime. Um, then, of course, we brought on Jorginho and Kai Havertz. I don't know why he took off Vieira. I don't get it. 
I don't. Uh, the same thing, taking off Gabriel Jesus and, re, uh, and uh, remaining with uh, Inkete on the pitch doesn't make sense to me. Another one that doesn't make any sense. There are some substitutes that Teta did for me in that game that was just off. It was just off. The taking off of Vieira was off and taking off Inketia instead of Gabriel. Uh, no, taking off Gabriel Jesus instead of Inketia was off. Yo, it worked for me. So, yeah. Anyway, Arsenal drew. And we are not looking good, man. It's not looking good for us. This time last season, we had dropped three points. Now we have dropped four points. This is not like the Arsenal used to see last season. So something has to give. Got me thinking, like, maybe you actually do need to get a striker. In January, we have to get a striker. Okay, Nani. Yeah, we are not converting enough, so we need to be more clinical. Um, then, of course, there was Chelsea versus Aston Villa. And, of course, we expected Aston Villa to win, and they did win. Chelsea cannot score goals to save their lives. They need to get a striker. They don't have a striker. They don't. They don't. And question asked, questions that would be asked by, by you know, to Pochettino, like, yo. Because if you have seen the fixtures that are coming up for Chelsea, it's not looking good for them. It's bad. It's bad, honestly. It's bad. So... Something needs to be done for them uh, to get back into winning ways. Otherwise, Pochettino attend Nyumbani. He'll be sent packing. A billion pounds of a squad with no striker. Makes no sense to me. Absolutely no sense. But it is what it is for Chelsea. Um, I don't think there's a game being played tonight. No, I don't think, but we have Carabao Cup games being played over the week. There was, of course, the Suzuka Grand Prix. There, of course, uh, the Japanese Grand Prix. And, of course, Max Verstappen got back to winning ways. Max Amibaksha one win now and he's winning the championship. If you win in Qatar in two weeks, it's, it's a wrap. You mentor. Red Bull have already won the Constructors Championship. You shy enter. Yeah, so, yeah, in Qatar, uh, Max wins his third consecutive title. Insane, when you think about it. As this come on Mercedes, we, uh, we did not get a podium finish. McLaren got a podium finish. Double podium finish, for that matter. So, it's crazy. Um, what else? Uh, we had Madrid derby going on, and uh, Real Madrid 3 Pigua 3 1. Eh? To go off, like in it, we had a very off. Our strikers were Rodrigo and Bellingham. I'm like, God damn, even Josel Wangazi, you came at least, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. So, yeah, holistically, a bad weekend for me. Yeah, holistically. Because rugby got beat. Uh, football to my Pigo Madrid, Arsenal to my Potesa points. Anyway, Tasca won. You know, uh, Tasca won against more on the big up. To man like a party okay for a watch party and of course uh it was nice to finally see him and uh, we hope he's gonna be getting more goals this season for tasca and look at him the team is he scored most goals against in the kenya premier league one of them is tasca the other one was uh vega united so now you're playing for tasca let's see if you can score a lot of goals for them now and not against them so that was nice to catch up with the man them and big up everybody everybody who came in for the watch party we shall be having another one on october 8th for the arsenal man city game so stick around for details of where that shall be happening. So that's that. Don't forget this week to catch up with the Pitbull boys. Of course, they'll be breaking down the Suzuka Grand Prix. And of course, as they weigh uh, the options of uh, Max Verstappen. And as I remember next week, but one, I'm uh, Itakwaji. Uh, of course, we shall also be doing the Extra Digest podcast. Uh, be on the lookout for that and much more. Of course, we do a little Extra Digest of what happened over the weekend with some other two or three guys. So that's that. Have a fantastic week. God bless. See you later.